Hello, my friends. Today I want to tell the story about this scary creature. What? No, no. This is not what I wanted to show my viewers. I don't know if you ever heard of this or not. The news about this bizarre event had spread all around my town, then spread to a few towns nearby. That, before federal cops and the government, stopped it from spreading further. It all started when a 20 years old girl, named Emma Dawn, came to the police in town to report he friends went missing after they went for camping and hunting in the woods in the outskirt of our town. The parents of her friends did report their children missing, so you can tell that they are actually missing, despite the extremely bizarre explanation that the girl gave to the police and the citizen. Her story sounded way too fantastic and unbelievable, so at first, people thought that she went crazy after what happened to them in the woods. Well, to the cops and citizens' opinion, whatever that happened, it was definitely not like what she explained. This was what her explanation about her friends being missing, they were trapped in the woods in the cabin. Yeah, you read it right. According to Emma's explanation, it was the woods in the cabin. The bottom line of her story was that, when they were walking around the woods to hunt for deer or rabbit, they stumbled upon a small cabin in the middle of the woods. The cabin's design looked like it was designed for humans to live in, but the size of it was not. The size of the cabin looked like it was designed more like an animal shelter, though humans could enter its door by crawling through it. When Robbie, one of Emma's friends opened the cabin's door, they were surprised to see there were other woods inside it. It looked like the inside of the cabin was a four-dimensional room to another wood somewhere. They entered the cabin one by one by crawling through the door. They left the cabin's door open, just in case. Inside the cabin, they saw many beautiful trees and flowers. Not long after, they heard the sound of an animal's breath near them. As they turned around they saw something that looked like a huge werewolf, standing on its two feet, staring deeply at them. And the animal looked hungry. Following their instinct, they ran for their lives towards the cabin's door. Of course, the size of the door made them unable to go out all at once, and instead, had to crawl through. Emma was running in front of her friends, and successfully became the first to reach the door that was still open. She crawled through it, and when she got out, she accidentally kicked the door closed as she ran out. To her horror, when she turned her head to see her friends, she saw no cabin there. The cabin was gone. Suppressed by shock, panic, horror, and distress, Emma ran out of the woods and went back to town as fast as she could. That was all she could tell. She had no idea where that cabin had gone to, or where it brought her friends with. People thought she went crazy or delusional and didn't think of her explanation seriously. I mean, who would? To every sane people, her story would sound completely insane and unbelievable. Well, not until another group of kids went missing again after they also went for camping and hunting in the same woods. In less than two months, there are already three groups of people went missing after they went for camping and hunting in that woods, including Emma's. Cops and citizens started to think of Emma's explanation seriously. Her story might sound insane as hell, but to that point, that was the only thing that could explain the disappearance of those three groups of kids. Maybe not really a woods in the cabin, but there should be something horrible there in the woods. During a chat with one of the cops, who happened to be my father's friend, it was revealed that there were also cases of missing groups in the woods before. Like eight cases. All happened in different towns, but all towns were closed to a woods. Cops and people in town started to warn everyone to not enter the woods. They even built a fence and put a forbidden sign on its entrance. 
As you might guess, the curiosity took the best of me one day, and I decided to get into the woods to investigate it myself, along with my buddies, Billy and Kyle. It took us several days of visit to the woods, but there was no sign of anything strange. I was about to give up the investigation when my friend, Billy, said something that hooked me. Those groups that went missing, they went to the woods for camping and hunting, right? I mean, camping and hunting. They weren't here for a walk like we did, right? Billy said. The three of us were staring at each other. We knew what was in each other's mind at the time, but none of us spoke it out. A few days later, we walked into the woods again. That time with the camping and hunting equipment. We spent three days camping in the woods. One day we actually did hunt. We got rabbits, so we decided to make a barbecue out of it while camping that night. Nothing strange happened that night. We, or at least me, started to think of our thoughts before we walked in with camping and hunting equipment. Maybe we were wrong. Maybe the hunting and the camping didn't have anything to do with the disappearance. Maybe even the so-called woods in the cabin itself was actually just a product of Emma's guilt from losing her friends. As we walked from our camping site to the border of the woods to get home, I heard Kyle, who walked behind me and Billy, whispering. I sense a vibe of horror in his voice. Ah. Guys. I think I'll regret showing you this, but. Um. Isn't that. Um. Billy and I turned our head back, to see Kyle staring at his left side with shock, surprise, and horror. We followed where his eyes went, and to our surprise, we saw a small cabin stood there, only 50 meters from us. From where we were standing, the cabin looked exactly like what Emma Dawn had described. We were staring at each other, and after a discussion, we decided to come close to the cabin. You wouldn't believe what we saw in the cabin after we opened its door. It was a woods. There was actually a woods in that cabin. Holy shit. Suppressed by both horror and curiosity at the same time, all of us wanted to get into the cabin to figure out what was inside. But knowing nothing about it, and added that to the story we had heard about it, none of us were dared to actually enter. We finally reached the deal that one of us will stay outside to keep the door open, and the other two will get in, to keep an eye on each other inside. Kyle was the one to stay outside and I and Billy would get in. Billy was the first to crawl inside, but he was about to be fully inside, he suddenly stopped. He stopped for a few minutes. Hey, dude, what's up? Why are you stopping? I asked. Guys, help me. Pull me out. Now. We gotta get out of here, Billy replied. What? But I thought. I hadn't finished my words when Billy cut it. Get out. Get out. Get out. He yelled in panic as he crawled back. In reflex, Kyle and I pulled Billy out of the cabin. Without any words. He slammed the cabin's door shut, and grabbed the hands of Kyle's and mine and dragged us out of there. You saw something? Kyle asked, with curiosity in his face. We looked back, and we saw the cabin still stood there. Well, it stood there, before eventually vanished right before our eyes. Run! Billy screamed. We ran out of the woods as fast as we could. As we got out, while we were still panting and trying to took a breath, Billy opened his bag, and pulled something out. It looked like a glass bottle, with a paper rolled up inside it. Billy put the paper out and opened it. It looked like a letter, and it was written in English. I haven't had a chance to fully read this, but, I had a chance to read the name of a person who wrote it, right at the top of this letter. Billy explained as he pointed his finger at the top of the letter, where there were names written on it. Robbie Klein, Alexandra Dimes, Daniel Dixon, Morgan Lynx. 
Wait. Isn't that. I was consumed by horror as I noticed whose name was written there. They were names of Emma Dawn's friends. The very first group from our town that went missing in the woods two months ago. The letter explained what was happened to them. The letter appeared to be written using a natural element from trees as the ink. And it seemed like Robbie Klein decided to put the letter in the glass bottle they found, and keep it in the woods inside the cabin, with the hope that if the cabin's door opened again, the letter would find its way out. Or someone who accidentally got in the cabin, just like them, would find it. We gave the letter to the cops later on, which eventually made the cops contacted the Federal to close the access to the woods, and cut off the information about the incident to spread further. But before we gave the letter to the police, we made a copy of the message in the letter. I warned you. Read this at your own risk. As I explained earlier, this might sound way too fantastic, insane and unbelievable, but I. We, proved it ourselves. We were there. We saw the cabin ourselves. Here is what was written in the letter that Billy had accidentally found in the woods inside the cabin. This letter was written by Robbie Klein, representing myself, Alexandra Dimes, Daniel Dixon, and Morgan Lynx. Emma had gotten out of the cabin. She was saved. Unfortunately, the rest of us not. Please pray for us to be able to find the cabin's door again. However, just in case we would never have, we decided to let people know what happened to us, just so it wouldn't happen to anyone else. This is our last resort. We didn't expect this letter to successfully get out. We just wish that, somehow, it would. If Emma had successfully reached the town, she might already tell you what happened. As crazy as it might sound, it was true. On our walk around the woods to hunt for deer or rabbit, we stumbled upon a small cabin. The cabin looked more like an animal shelter than humans, but we, humans, could enter by crawling through the door. Inside the cabin, there were a woods. No. Seriously, there was a huge, tropical woods inside that small cabin. The cabin might be a four-dimensional room, or the door might be a portal to another world. Either way, we were trapped here. We ran for our life when we spotted a creature that looked like a werewolf standing not far from us. After Emma had gotten out of the cabin's door and accidentally kicked the door close and made it vanished into thin air. We had no other options than to turn around and found a way to survive in the woods, while looking for a way out. The werewolf that we originally thought was hungry and was about to eat us alive, turned out to be just standing there, groaning like a beast. Somehow for every one of us, it sounded like it was trying to warn us out of something, but we didn't understand anything it said, so then. The werewolf turned around and ran to the woods. Not to be seen again. We were walking through the tropical woods, surrounded by huge trees and fantastical flowers we have never seen before in our lives. Along the way, we passed by other creatures as strange as the werewolf we saw earlier. Strange enough for us, all of the creatures were all furry from head to toe and they were all standing on two feet. Their faces weren't looked so much like an animal. It looked like the creature was somehow made out of humans, which somehow was turned to be a furry two-legged animal. And even if they saw us, none of them ran towards us, trying to eat us or kill us. They were just standing there, staring at us from afar. Morgan once told his opinion that he caught a glimpse of sadness in the creature's eyes while they were staring at us. We were walking through the woods, not knowing it had been for how long, or how far. The strangest moment of us being here, was when we spotted something that looked like a building. We immediately ran towards it. The building looked like it was made of concrete, with thick, 
bulletproof glasses on some parts of it. If there was a building, then, it meant, there was a civilization. If there was a civilization, then, it meant, there must be other human beings. In excitement, we were knocking on the wall and the windows, yelling for help. We were hoping anyone who lived in there would hear us. We followed the shape of the building, knocking every window that we saw. At one point, from the outside looking into one of the windows, we thought we saw something that looked like a human's silhouette. The window was dark, we couldn't see clearly of what was in there, and the glass was so thick, we weren't sure anyone on the inside would hear us. However, we were certain that there was someone in there, judging from the silhouette that we saw. And it was not just one or two, it was a group of people. Strangely, no matter what we did, either knocking or yelling, they were just stood there, watching. And then, at some point, the light on the inside of the building was brightened up. We started to be able to see clearly, who was inside. We were sure it was a man, some of them wore suits, some other wore lab coats. Due to the limitation of the light, we weren't able to see their faces. But then, slowly, it was getting clear. We were finally able to see their faces. As we saw the faces of the people who were staring at us from the inside, all of us were screaming as we jumped back in horror. There were many people there inside the building. And yes they were wearing suits and lab coats. But they were not humans. They had heads of animals. Unlike the creatures we saw out here in the woods, the creatures we saw inside the building had the clear physical shape of animals head, with the body of humans. There were elephants, lions, monkeys, birds, etc. and they were standing on two feet, wearing suits and lab coats. One of them, a humanoid lion wearing a suit, step ahead and he did something that we assumed was pushing a button of a speaker, because then, it talked to us. Hi there, humans, the humanoid lion said. You haven't transformed yet, so I assumed you are new here. So, I'll just do the thing I always do every time there are new humans passing by this facility, the humanoid lion continued. This place is a four-dimensional animal shelter, located inside the cabin. I, along with other animals you saw here, happened crawl through the cabin's door. And this place has different timescape than the outside world. What were 150 years here, only felt like a few minutes outside the cabin. Through that time, we have evolved from four-legged animals into two-legged ones, with the intellects of human beings. Isn't that awesome? He asked. We enjoy living in this city of trees and flowers, so we are not planning to go out. We even plan to bring as many animals from the outside world to this sanctuary. We have the responsibility to save them too the humanoid lion paused, then he continued from you, humans. You've been treating us like lab rats. Skinned us out for fashion. Hunting us down for fun. But here we are, in a sanctuary of animals and plants. So, so, you're planning to take revenge on us? Daniel asked, stuttering. Oh. No, no. We are not like you. And we promised ourselves that, the humanoid lion answered. The thing is, even if we plan to bring other animals to this sanctuary, we have a hard time finding the door ourselves. It was opened and closed randomly at different coordinates each time, so that means, you guys will be stuck here for a while too. But if one day you managed to find the door, don't worry, we wouldn't hold you from getting out. I just here to inform you about the situation you are in right now. Oh, and the longer you stayed in the woods, the nectar spread by some flowers here, which you already breathed in since you entered the cabin, will slowly turn you into furry creatures. 
I believed you have already seen come of those creatures on your way here, the humanoid lion added. And one more thing. Don't expect us to let you inside the building. As I said, humans treated us so badly, we couldn't afford to trust any of you. So, while you're looking for the door to get you out, you'll be staying in the woods and learn to survive there. And while you are here, you will be the subject of our zoo, the humanoid lion continued its explanation. Which I hope you wouldn't mind, considering how you treated us in the zoo, after all. We are not hurting you though. We are just looking and observing. That's it, I guess. We hope the best for you, the humanoid lion closed his speech as he let go of the speaker button, and dimmed the light in the building, so we could no longer see them. After the meeting with the evolved humanoid animals, we had spent three days in the woods, trying to survive, before we decided to write the letter. By the time we wrote it, some of us already started to grow fur on our skins seemed like what the humanoid lion said was true. Here is why we wrote this letter, again. First thing first, is to avoid other people to be trapped in here again. Secondly, we were also thinking to remind us all about one thing. Wherever we are, whatever we do, please, we have to care about every living being around us. Be it humans, animals, or plants. There will always a way for nature to take revenge on bad people.